So at this point, we have our initial implanted embryo. And from here, we're going to talk about what happens with the rest of the development and pregnancy. So first, we have the development of membranes. So you can see here is the implanted embryo in the uterus. At this point, it's in the wall. It's sort of bulging the wall out. It's not taking up a lot of space. Um, and that's sort of this, this end piece that you can see here, this initial bulge out. Here, you'll see it's just inside the wall. So we have this initial embryo, and it's starting, it has this amniotic cavity that you saw, start of a yolk sac. Um, and we have building around it this initial set of membranes. And that becomes the chorion. And that chorion is going to create these villi, which will start connecting up with the maternal uh, blood vessels that are coming in here. And then the will eventually start becoming the placenta that is going to provide the interaction between the fetus's developing circulatory system and the mother's circulatory system. Now this is really important. From the time that the fetus starts producing its own blood, the mother's blood and the fetus's blood aren't going to directly mix. So at that point, the fetus is going to have an umbilical cord that will send the blood out into these fetal um, capillaries. So the chorionic membrane, remember we have that chorionic membrane, it has these fetal capillaries, and these fetal capillaries carry the fetal blood out to uh, the placenta and then back. Meanwhile, they will be submerged in the maternal blood in this sinus, but the membranes of those capillaries are still there. There's still walls with cells creating a barrier between the maternal blood and the fetal blood. So the maternal blood flows into this sinus um, and flows around these capillaries, allowing exchange of gas and nutrients to, so allowing oxygen nutrients to the fetus and picking up carbon dioxide and waste products from the fetus and carrying them back to maternal circulation to be dealt with. Now, at this point also, we have changes in the hormonal cycle of what's going on here. So from the time that the fetus develops this placenta, um, you're going to see this rise in HCG, which is human chorionic gonadotropin. So chorionic, it's coming from that chorionic membrane, right? We've heard that term. So, and this is going to act, serve the same role as FSH and LH. So if you remember, um, in chemical ERIC, when there were problems with sperm development, human chorionic gonadotropin is what they gave him to substitute for FSH and LH. So it is going to start the gonadal development of the fetus. And this rises very sharply during the first half of the first trimester, then plateaus and starts decreasing in the early second trimester, end of the first trimester. This is uh, one of the things we can measure very easily to check for pregnancy. So this is what pregnancy tests are, often, are generally looking for. Um, and it is also something we check to see the health of a pregnancy. It had, follows this very clear, defined course. And if um, it drops off too early or continues going up or doesn't drop off when it should, that's an indication that something is going wrong in the pregnancy. At the same time, the ovary is continuing to produce estrogen and progesterone. The progesterone is slowly ramping up over the first half of the first trimester, and estrogen is staying pretty stable. So we're continuing to see that production. In the second trimester, the placenta is going to take over a lot more of the hormone production. So the ovary is still producing a little, but the placenta is producing um, more progesterone and estrogen, and those start ramping up, the estrogen starts ramping up in the second trimester. The progesterone is still staying relatively stable for most of the second trimester, but starts ramping up towards the end of the second trimester, beginning of the third trimester. In the third trimester, the ovary has really stopped producing um, and placenta is producing more and more 
progesterone and estrogen uh, circulating. And this keeps ramping up. Estrogen keeps ramping up right up until delivery. Progesterone is going to ramp up toward, until the end of third trimester and then plateau and even start going down just a little bit as delivery approaches. Uh, this is important because progesterone actually prevents labor. And we take advantage of that if women are prone to premature labor, we give them progesterone to try and prevent that. So estrogen ramps up towards labor, progesterone tamps that down. Now here's sort of a fetal development starting from the time that we have a, a sort of baby-shaped fetus, right? That you see all the major parts here. And as this fetus develops, it's going to start taking up more and more space in the abdomen. Um, so at four months, it's you know taking up some space, but not that much more than sort of the uterus takes up. It's stretching the uterus, but only a little bit. And then as it goes, it takes up more and more space. You'll see the here we've got face forward, and then sometime in the <coughs> late second trimester, start of the third trimester, the baby will turn to face backwards, so it's the face is towards the mother's spine. Um, there will also be other movement during this whole time. Um, the kicking that people experience during this um, as the baby moves and resettles. And this also forms important connections between the central nervous system and the muscles as the, as the baby starts moving in the, in the womb. Now, as you notice at the end of this, um, in the last couple of months, the fetus is now taking up a large portion of the mother's abdomen, basically almost the entire area below the ribs and somewhat squishing up even sometimes into the very edge of the ribs is taken up, uh, especially on the sides, you are, so the, not you know, below the ribs on the front, um, is taken up by this fetus, which means that everything else is sort of squished out of the way. Um, this means that the stomach and intestines are actually pushed up against the diaphragm, meaning that um, in this part of pregnancy, the mother is taking very shallow breaths, mostly from the chest. The diaphragm isn't able to do really any of the work at this point. Um, so this very much limits their aerobic capacity and also makes them more prone to certain types of respiratory infections um, because the whole intestines and stomach are being pushed up into there. Now that also compacts the stomach so they can't eat very much at a time and compacts the intestine in particular. The intestine gets compacted against the spine by the baby's head. This um, compaction of the large intestine against the spine tends to cause a lot of problems with constipation because it's very hard to pass these feces through um, the, this very narrow intestine area. In addition, the bladder is compressed by the baby's head. Uh, this is sort of one of the most famous features of late pregnancy that uh, women tend to have very short period that they can go without needing to urinate because the bladder is very small and compressed here. So that's what this all looks like at the end of pregnancy. So now we've reached the end of pregnancy and that takes us to labor and delivery. So um, what happens with labor and delivery is first the fetus's head starts pressing on the cervix. Now um, progesterone, remember, decreases the potential of labor. It decreases the contractility of the uterus. It makes it less likely to happen. But as that progesterone starts flattening off and decreasing at the end, and estrogen ramps up, estrogen is going to induce oxytocin receptors on the uterus, which stimulate contraction. So those oxytocin receptors are then going to stimulate contraction. Now the baby's head pushing on the cervix is going to release oxytocin and also cause direct contractions of the uterine muscles. And so that stimulates the uterus to contract. It also stimulates the placenta to make prostaglandins, which stimulates more contraction of the uterus. And as it's doing this, it's gonna cause the baby's head to push harder on the cervix, 
which is going to release more oxytocin and cause more muscular contraction. So this is a positive feedback loop. So this amps up and amps up and amps up until the baby is pushed out. So the stages of labor, uh, we divide into three parts. There's dilation, expulsion, and then the placental stage. So during dilation, the baby's head pushes against the cervix and the cervix relaxes, causing it to um, open up and thin out. So it opens this gap in the middle and the cervix thins and flattens out. Then um, there's the expulsion phase where the baby is actually pushed out. This is sometimes called the pushing phase. So the baby is being pushed out through the opened cervix. Once that happens, the placenta needs to be expelled and there's some final contraction to get that placenta out. If the placenta doesn't all come out, this can cause infection and other problems later on. So it's really important that this all gets out. Now, there's a lot of ways that this can go wrong. Um, one common one is breech positioning. So in normal position, the fetus will be head down in a fetal position, um, but in breech positioning, the fetus is head up. Now, if this is noticed early, uh, the doctors will often try and turn the baby so that the baby will be head down and can be delivered normally. However, if this isn't possible, generally we deliver by C-section. So in C-section, um, a cut is made in the abdomen, another one is made in the uterus itself. The baby is removed through that cut and the placenta is also removed and then those cuts are sutured. Um, this can be done because of breech positioning. It can also be done for a lot of other reasons that make vaginal delivery unsafe. Um, for example, if the umbilical cord is tangled around the baby's throat, that can be one. There can be uh, maternal conditions that make it unsafe. Or sometimes it can just be done if essentially vaginal labor isn't working. If it goes on for too long, it can become dangerous to both mother and baby. And at that point, they will decide to do a C-section.